Welcome, everybody. It is Jason and Alex back again for the Sackos. This is our uh, week 14 Waiver Wire show. Week 14 in the house. It's week 14 in this house. <laughs> the joke was funny 10 weeks ago, and it's still funny. I don't uh, care. There we go. All right. Stay with us. We got all your waiver moves coming in. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. With your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos. Jason and Alex back again. Week 14 Waiver Wire Edition. We got all the advice you could ever need to set you up uh, to have a successful I believe run. some would actually say that we have... A w- we are waiver advice pros, I think. Wow, waiver advice pros. Look at you keeping <laughs> praise on us like that. That's fine. Yeah, WAP. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you can't get it. Kids can't get off of it, huh? We're just staying. It's just staying on freaking WAP. <laughs> How did I not even Sorry, catch man. that? I was I so fr- I was so ready confused. To go. Oh my god! Yeah, that's fun. We're sitting and recording waiver this. waiver advice pros. We're sitting week fourteen. Uh, we're sitting here recording this, and I don't even know if I'm going to make the playoffs in our big money league because I need Debo Samuel and J.K. Dobbins to outscore Tyler Bass by twenty five points or twenty points, and he's not doing a damn thing. Debo, that is friggin' garbage. He had thirteen targets this last week. Now he's sitting at two in the third quarter. I hate fantasy. But I love it. Oh, Yikes. Go ahead. Take a drink of your tears that have come pouring out of your eyes. Uh, <sighs> maybe it'll make you feel better. You're right. Um, yeah. So that's how Jason's doing. I'm doing great. Probably not making the playoffs in any leagues. It'll be sweet if I do, but maybe not. And uh, yeah, I, I feel like everybody has fantasy fatigue at this point. Um, gambling's I have really hard. Non-touchdown um, fantasy fatigue. He scored two touchdowns last oh, yeah, night. Neither one of the damn ones counted. And if I would have gotten one out of two of them, I think I'd be in the fantasy playoffs. Sure thing. But freaking Tyree kill. All right. All right. There we go. Got it out. I feel I better. I think my, I don't, I honestly don't think my four month old daughter cries as much as you do sometimes. Ooh, that was spicy. That's fine. She's prettier than I am. That's fine. I, I don't know. Factual. At least yeah. I don't poop on point. myself, right? Like I got that going for me. At least not for another 30, 40 years. What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. All right. Um, before we get started, I want to start with at least one piece of waiver wire advice or just playoff advice, really, before we get too deep into who you should add and drop. If you play on the Yahoo platform, for fantasy football. Uh, first off, I'm going to apologize because it's inferior to ESPN's platform in just about every way. Um, and one of those True. ways is exemplified by their ability or Yahoo's ability, uh, or rather a player's ability to add and drop players on their bench, regardless of whether or not they have played on Yahoo. So my advice to you, if you are on Yahoo, take advantage of it. If you have a buy in the first round of your playoffs, don't set a lineup. Do not set a lineup because if you set a lineup, they lock when they play. Leave everybody on your bench. If somebody gets hurt, if somebody gets COVID, if somebody does something, if something happens, if somebody gets benched, whatever, your person will be on your bench in your Yahoo League. You will be able to add and drop them and make moves regardless of whether or not they have played. On ESPN, they lock until Wednesday. So if you're in Yahoo, don't set a roster if you have a buy. That's my nugget of advice for this week. <sighs> Alex, you got any nugs? Nice. Other than that, no, no nugs. Um, I, dry? Yeah, I, I, I love nuggets. Uh, hopefully people would save their sauce a little bit so that they um, have some have some money to drop down as it's finally go time. And this is where you make all your money. So uh, let's do it. There you go. My only other piece of advice is like you should have been looking forward to defensive matchups and picked up a couple teams in advance, maybe at least one. Um, and we'll get into who those might be a little bit later. But 
let's get into some waivers, shall we? First up, my priority out of the week. I don't think I would have ever let him sit on a waiver wire, even during the regular season, much like I held on to J.K. Dobbins all year. I think I would have held on to Cam Akers. Um, Cam Akers for the Rams nah. had 21 attempts, 72 yards, a touchdown. He also had a catch for 22 yards. He's rostered in a little bit more than 36% or right about 36% of ESPN leagues. Alex, how much money, how much fab are you spending on Cam Akers? It's a good question. Um, this is, again, the very crappy player we talked about a couple of weeks ago um, where it was like, yeah, maybe you could roster him if you wanted to. Um, he was their only guy. Um in the backfield yesterday, 21 carries as a team. They had 31 carries. Um, so all of a sudden rookie running back and they're giving him the ball. Um, and he got sniped by a, by a golf touchdown and, and Henderson had a touchdown too. Um, so you are potentially looking at a, at a league winner here. Um, so, I mean, honestly, um, at this point, he's rostering 36% of leagues on ESPN. Um, aren't you spending all of your fab if he's available? Like, aren't you just going all in and saying, screw it, this is, this is the, the guy, and if he's available, just put it all on there? All of it. Every dime. Every nickel. Or, if you are the person yeah, with the I, most fab in your league, then I would spend $1 more than what the next person is, has left in their bank account. So don't go spending all your fab if you don't need to. But yes, I Cam Akers, I think, is a league winner. I think he's been a league winner. We saw this last year with Miles Sanders. The rookies, they sit on the bench for eight games and they play half the snaps. And then eventually in the second half of the season, they start letting people take over. I think Cam Akers would have taken over sooner, but Cam Akers was in and out with injury for the first half of the season. Um, I, I think you, I think I went into the season saying he was the most talented back in the backfield. Um, I just, it is it's true. clearly the guy. It's clearly the, and, the guy. Yeah. And, and, and Henderson started the game with two carries for 11 yards. And then I think Akers had the next like 21 carries. Uh, you know, Malcolm Brown had three for negative three in there. Um, so, I mean, Henderson started the first two carries and he had a, a long 38 yard touchdown run. Um, so, like, it was basically the Cam Akers show. And um, I, I don't think it's an over exaggeration that you can justify putting um, all of your fab on acres if, if he's available in your league. And this is finally the go for a time. Yeah. Or to your point, one dollar more than whoever the next closest is. Yeah. Um, there you go. Spend it if you got it on Cam Akers. I think he's a league winner. Um, yeah, there you go. All right. Next up, we have spread time. your sauce. Use it. There you go. Next up, we have Ty Johnson. Uh, Ty Johnson stepped in for Frank Gore, who was concussed uh, on like the what the first play or second play. Uh, super frustrating because yeah, first carry. Yeah, super frustrating because of what Ty Johnson was able to do. Uh, he had 18.7 uh, fantasy points in a half PPR setting. 22 rushes for 104 yards and a score, two catches for 13 yards. He's rostered in 0.3% of leagues. Uh, playoff schedule at Seattle, at the Rams, home against Cleveland. I mean, maybe Gore comes back this week. I don't know. I don't know what his concussion <laughs> history is. Um, but how much fab are you out here trying to spend on Ty Johnson in case <laughs> Gore can't go? I'm I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Frank Gore has been concussed a lot in his career, just based on the fact that he's a running back and he's like 36. Um, just fair. Ju just going to go on a limb and say whether it's been diagnosed or not, he's probably had a lot of concussions. Um, so I don't, I, I think Ty Johnson again is another priority add um, to your point. How much I spend on him is a good, good freaking question. I mean, what's the point of even rushing Frank Gore back at this point? Um, I mean, Ty Johnson's what, 24 or something like that. 
So why why not see what a young player has when you're seemingly trying to lose anyway, although they disputed that when they fired their defensive coordinator for running an engage eight when all you had to do was defend the goal line. But um I I don't that know was how awful. like let's say Let's say for argument's sake that Ty Johnson will be the undisputed guy going forward. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But are you really going to want to play him week 15 against the Rams or week 16 against Cleveland? Like I, I don't think you do, um, even if he's the guy. Um, I, I know Seattle just got gashed pretty good by Gallman, um, but the Rams defense against like I think the Rams defense is very good inherently um and and Cleveland held Derrick Henry in check as much as possible that they got out to a huge lead and um you know what are you gonna do about that so I I don't know exactly what you should spend on him um it's it's probably in the 10% range, but if Frank Gore comes back, like, is it even worth it? Um, is, I mean, P Ryan's still on IR. Um, I don't think he's coming back anytime soon. I feel like you're really struggling with this, man. No, I don't know what to I don't know what to say because do you really want the running back on a crappy Jets team? Nobody rostered Frank Gore for weeks, and then all of a sudden people played him, and then he sucked. Um, and it's the freaking Jets. Their offense is terrible. Yeah, yeah. Like if you, Cam Akers is clearly the the better of the two, but I don't, I don't know if you go more than ten percent on him. I wouldn't go more but than five. I, I and think he's going to be like my fifth I, waiver I, priority. Like, I don't want Ty Johnson. I don't yeah, want. I, I don't want to play him against the Rams or against Cleveland. And so, I know I'm paying what to play him against Seattle. Like, if Cam Akers is there, and I'm choosing between the two, I'm putting all my dough on Akers, and I'm hoping and praying I get him. Like, or any of the receivers that we have listed here. Um, so. I don't know. Or I'm taking a flyer on our next guy. But. All right. That's if, if Akers isn't tight. available. Aren't you going and you need a running back, though? Like. Ty Johnson's the guy and like you're not going for Adrian Peterson, right? Like it, no. if Swift is out again. Like, no, it's just kind of kind of nasty. Yes, it is. Um, no, I'm not. Honestly, I'm just not. I'm not trying to get Ty Johnson because I don't think I'm going to use him for two weeks. So I want acres. If I don't get acres, then I probably want our next guy that we're going to talk about or I want a receiver because realistically, these people should be flex plays for you. They shouldn't be like unless you suffered a major injury or something or you got covid or something. I don't know. We'll see how bad the covid gets in Carolina. You got covid right yeah, right now the Carolina running back situation is fine. I don't think CMC or Mike Davis have it. So, knock on wood. Anyways, um, let's get into our next guy, and that is Jeff Wilson Jr., who's sort of a late add. Uh, he had six rushing attempts for 29 yards in the first half of the Monday Night Football game. Uh, was in on the opening drive, got several goal line carries, was stuffed on all of them. Uh, they put in Mostert, who was stuffed on his. Um, which isn't great, but curious to see Jeff Wilson out here splitting work with Raheem Mostert currently at seven rushing attempts for 47 yards to Mostert's eight rushing attempts for 32. So doing more with less. Um, I don't know if, if it's just because it's Mostert's first game back, they're trying to keep him healthy and trying to keep him healthy for the playoffs or what, but uh, either way, that is a very productive offense that you want. You, I mean, the running back is going to be very productive in. Um, how much fab are you out here trying to spend on Jeff Wilson Jr.? I'd rather have him than Ty Johnson, quite honestly. But no, I think that's a stretch. I mean, if I like if Ty Johnson's the only person there, then yeah, I I think that's an exaggeration. Um, if if Ty Johnson is the only guy he's going to put up better numbers than Jeff Wilson does. 
in a what four or five or six headed backfield. Um, also, I, I would point out that next week the 49ers are playing against Washington, um, which before today was was the fifth best against running backs from a uh, or you know fifth stingiest defense against running backs. So, um, you know, do you really want to start them against Washington? I don't know the answer to that. Um, Dallas and Arizona are, are fine matchups afterwards. Um, and the Shanahanigans, do you really want to even deal with it? Um, if you're going to add Jeff Wilson, I think you can get away with $0. Um, I, I would much prefer Ty Johnson to him. Okay. So are you spending any fab on Jeff Wilson? No. Okay. That's fair. Uh, I, end of the bench stash for me. Um, I really doubt Mostert's ability to stay healthy um, at this point and think uh, it's pretty obvious that Jeff Wilson is the next guy in line in that backfield. I think that you have Jimmy Garoppolo coming back eventually, maybe even some George Kittle, maybe even some life in that offense. And so I think that the running back will be productive. If Mostert can't stay healthy um, or they're trying to save him for the playoffs, I think Jeff Wilson becomes a viable flex play at the least. So especially if he keeps continuing to split work. but. Okay. Yeah. Just for the record, Kyle Juszczyk just scored a receiving touchdown. So again, that, that backfield between, you know, McKinnon, Coleman potentially coming back, Mostert, Juszczyk, Jeff Wilson. Um, I like I mean, it. That's, uh, that can be really, that's really tough. That's it's really good. tough. It's good to be diverse. <laughs> Hasty, th- throw hasties in there too. Like, goodness gracious. Good to be diverse. All right. Let's move on to some receivers, shall we? Um, so I'm going to eat some crow. I think we both are, you know, in a little bit anyway, we've talked a lot this season about the corpse of T Y Hilton. Um, the corpse of T Y Hilton is figuring out how to play football again in week. I don't know. in the double digit weeks of the fantasy football season. Uh, he, T Y Hilton had 11 targets, eight catches, 110 yards and a score. He's only rostered in 47% of leagues. What fab are you spending on T Y Hilton and how much do you hate yourself when you do it? Oh, oh, (laughs) it's a good question. Um, so the schedule coming up at Las Vegas, which is pretty good, pretty good matchup. Uh, Houston, love it. It's a pretty good, pretty good matchup. Um, and he's had he's had some pretty good success against Houston in the past. Um, and then at Pittsburgh, which is probably the worst of the, of the three. You can pass but, on him. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming that if you're in the playoffs and you've made it to Week 16, that you're probably not relying on T.Y. Hilton at a wideout spot. No, just a just a guess, uh, and <laughs> and if you are, well, that certainly sucks. Um, I, I think Ty, um, I mean, he did not have a double digit point week until last, you know, in week twelve, and then he duplicated in week thirteen. Those are the only two weeks that he scored a touchdown. So yes, he had eleven targets, but. It's only the second time this season he's gone over or been in double digit targets. So if we follow the targets, they haven't been there most of the year. You can't really predict touchdowns. Um, so I, I know the I know the the yards were there. I understand catches were there. Um, man, if you're that desperate for a wide out, um, I. I think I might rather have Rashard Higgins. It's close. Um, I would definitely rather have Kiki QT um, than T.Y. Hilton. Uh, if we're You're ranking spoiling them. all my fun. We're going to talk um, about these guys still. So how much fab are you spending on him? No. <sighs> we can get it into waiver <laughs> priority later if you want. <laughs> but how much fab are you putting on yeah, T.Y.? I, I would never go more than five percent on him. I don't. I don't even care. I, I I couldn't do it. Love it. I same. 
I wouldn't go more than five. I'd go two bucks. That's about it. All right. Fine. Let's get into a couple players that you mentioned that are more exciting than T.Y. Hilton. First up, let's talk about... Mm, I'll go with Richard Higgins. Nine targets, six okay. catches, ni- 95 yards, and a score. Rostered in 3.5% of leagues. How much fab are you spending on Richard Higgins? I think it could be a maybe, maybe a little bit of a decent amount. I don't know. The Browns schedule is at home against the Ravens, which is brutal. Uh, so you probably won't play him even if you get him in week 14. But then it is at the Giants and at the Jets. So he is completely viable weeks 15 and 16. And so he can get you that money. Um, uh, I think he's good. I, I mean, Baker obviously liked throwing to him. He had nine targets. So how much fab are you out here trying to spend on Richard Higgins, even if you can't use him in week 14 against the Ravens? Um, I think you could if you were in a in a tight spot. Um, honestly, because I mean Baltimore is their their secondaries got pretty banged up against Pittsburgh last week. We don't know what they're going to look like coming out of the game tomorrow. Um, as we record this against Dallas, and they're they're on a short week where they might be extremely tired after a pretty tumultuous couple weeks here and dealing with COVID and everything that they have. Um, so I, I actually think that you might be able to get away with it. The issue is you don't know what the weather is going to be like in Cleveland uh, on the lake. Uh, in their last couple of games that they've been at home, um, they just weren't throwing the ball all that much. So uh, if we look at those two, you know, before this week, his targets were four, four, two, and then nine. Um, but with that being said, I think I'd rather have, I, I think Higgins might have a, Bigger upside, oh God, um, than, wow. than Ty at this point. Um, because he's younger, I think his quarterback might be better. Um, and I I saw a stat that that Baker's um passer rating when throwing to Rashard Higgins was higher than it was to any other player on his team on on Sunday, and that and that includes Landry, who was who was pretty darn good in that game. Um, so I, I think Higgins is probably, a you know, seven to 10% fab play potentially, um, because a week 16 is against the jets and that's juicy. And I, I think you can definitely start him, um, where you probably would not be starting T Y in week 16, but again, that's in three weeks. You got to get to the title game. Um, so yeah, I, I well, I'll say five to 7% is where I land on Higgins ultimately. Okay, not bad. Um, yeah, if I was on a if I had a buy in the first round, I'd be spending up. I think a little bit on Higgins just because weeks fifteen and sixteen are just so disgusting. Um, but mm-hmm. I, I'd probably go five percent to maybe seven percent. I mean, five to seven percent on Higgins. Um, I think you can yep. get him for that much. I think he, he's probably worth more than that. Like he's probably in the ten to. 15%, but I just think that nobody knows who Richard Higgins is, and so I think you could probably get him for 5 to 10%, but in most yeah. leagues, anyway. Um, all right, next up, we have Kiki QT, who's certainly, I think, more well-known than Higgins, um, but equally productive this week. Nine targets, eight catches, 141 yards, rostered in 12.5% of leagues. You and I called it. We said last week after Fuller got his suspension to preemptively add Kiki QT if you could, because Deshaun is a perennial, I think. Like, I don't think I will ever make the mistake of ranking Deshaun Watson outside of the top six fantasy football quarterbacks on the season again. It doesn't matter who his weapons are, it doesn't matter how bad his coaching staff is. Doesn't matter that he has a non existent running game or hurt running game. Um, the guy generates fantasy points like it's nobody's business. Um, so if Wolf Fuller's gone and Houston, you know, says, Hey, what's up, Kiki QT? Then Kiki QT to me is like a wide receiver, two fringe wide receiver, 
flex like top 30 receiver probably rest of season i don't think that that's shocking um the only thing i hate about them is that their schedule is at the bears at the colts and then at home against cincy so that's not so great however the bears just found a way to lose to the lions and then before that got smoked by the packers so maybe that's not super intimidating um we'll see but what do you think about what's up cutie um i think the fact that like i mean kiki just put up eight for 141 against indy who he plays again in two weeks um they seem more intent on trying to shut down cooks than they were cutie i would expect the bears to try to do something similar uh and then cincinnati week 16 uh i i think he's the best wide receiver ad um because of potential upside with with the quarterback and the offense just in general they're you know they're they're out of it and they're just kind of slinging the ball around they don't really have a great running game to rely on and they're just saying here you go to sean try to just sling this ball over the yard and it's working out pretty well um, I, I think you can go, um, you know, depending on your fab situation, um, uh, he should be the priority waiver, um, except for, um, you know, who we've talked about previously that I'm, I'm blanking on, which is, which is Cam Akers. Um, I, I think made it that QT is probably, yep. Got there. Uh, I, I think that QT is, is, you know, second in line of everybody we've talked about. Um, and I, I think, you know, if you have it, I think you try to get a spend to, to get him just because I, I think the upside's there. Um, so I, for me, this is a 15 to 20 percenter um, just because if, if you have a lot of fab, you got to spend it. There's no point in taking it home with you. Um, so I, I think it's worth spending it to get him of everybody we've talked about besides Cam. I agree. Um, I like QT a lot. I mean, I think he has just as much chance to be the wide receiver one in a given game on that team as Brandon Cooks does. I don't think that there's a huge target share that Brandon Cooks is going to maintain. Um, So, yeah, absolutely. I'm with you on that. The 15 to 20%. If you have fab left, go for it. Um, All right. That does it for QT. Next up, Tim Patrick. Of the Denver Broncos, four targets, four catches, 44 yards, two scores. Rostered in 16% of leagues. He is Cortland Sutton light is what I think Tim Patrick is. Um, He's way faster than Sutton is. <laughs> but I just mean, he's he's in that role. He's generating probably 80 to 90% of the points. Um He's been very good in league in games when they've been able to start a quarterback uh, at the position. <laughs> uh, um, when they've been able to start a quarterback, he's a good wide receiver. Yeah. In games where they start wide receivers at quarterback, he has two targets and no catches. But in games when they start quarterbacks, <laughs> he, he's averaging close to 15 points in um per week over the last month in games where they've been able to start quarterbacks. So uh, starting week nine in games that they've had quarterbacks, he's had um, double digits in three out of four games. So his only uh, single digit game was against Atlanta in week 10 where he still had eight points. So I think he's got like a six to eight point floor and a 20 point ceiling, which is pretty freaking great. Um, only rostered, like I said, in 15 and a half, 16% of leagues of ESPN leagues. I just think that people don't like the name Tim Patrick. I think it's just very boring and they don't like the offense and maybe they don't like Drew Locke. I don't know. I don't know why he's rostered. I've had him rostered on several teams. I've also dropped him because he's gotten hurt a couple times. But like he needs to be added more and he needs to be started more. Um, I mean, he's going to finish close to 10 targets a game in games where they have quarterbacks. So I don't know. I like Tim. I would probably put 10 to 15% on Tim. Wow. 
That's aggressive. Um, I I was thinking about KJ Hamler being faster than Cortland Sutton. You are correct on the the Sutton light on Tim Patrick. Sorry, I'm getting my my uh, my players confused of of Broncos. Um, Tim Patrick is fine. Um, I think the reason why you have to like him at least a little bit is just because of Drew Locke's downfield average um, depth of target, which I believe leads. Uh, Leads all of the league, and uh, you know when when Locke is healthy and playing, um, so that leads to more explosive plays. Um, so if they're going to throw the ball um, to him, let's say eight to ten times, and the average depth of targets ten yards, which I believe it is, um, you know, just catching the ball gets you, you know, the ten yards a crack, and then let alone with yak afterwards. Um, I think that that is, he's playable, um, Carolina, Buffalo and the chargers. That's pretty tasty. Um, I, especially against the chargers week 16, I, I think that's a, that could be a shootout and one where if you have a random Bronco go off, it could be kind of fun. Um, because I don't think a lot of people would be playing a, a Bronco in a, in a title game. Um, so I think it'd be worth having him. Um, wide receiver 43 so far on the year. Um, I think you can probably still get like, he's only rostered in 15% of leagues. So for that matter, I, I think you can get him for cheaper because people are like, who the hell is this guy? Um, he did have 18 points, um, against Kansas city. So that's, I mean, that's a big number. So you might spend to get him, but I think it's probably worth it. Um, just because I, I do think that the upside can be there. And if you're in a rough spot, um, he, he should be added. So I I would go QT, Tim Patrick, and then um, Hilton, I guess. Like, it, I, don't, I don't really like any of those guys, honestly. Um, so I, that, that's what I would say is, is go QT, go Patrick, and then I would go Higgins and then Hilton uh, in, that, in that order of four. If you haven't already spent all of your fab on Cam Akers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um all right, that does it for wide receiver ads. Let's move on to some tight ends, shall we? Uh to be the really the clear the clear ad is Logan Thomas. Uh nine targets, nine catches, mm -hmm. almost 100 yards and a score today against Pittsburgh. Um rostered in about a quarter of leagues, 25%. Um He's been good and bad, a little inconsistent, but you know who hasn't been a tight end? Um, I just think yep. that Alex Smith is at least a serviceable quarterback. I think he likes throwing to the tight end, and I think Logan Thomas is actually a good player. Um, their next three games are at San Fran, home against Seattle, home against Carolina. So those matchups don't really scare me. The San Fran one, not great. Um, but the, the other two, the last two weeks don't really scare me. So if you're in a pinch at tight end, think about Logan Thomas, how much fab would you spend? I think you could probably get him for like 5%, 10%. Yeah. Uh, again, I would, I would check where the, your other playoff teams are from a fab perspective, based on that, if they have tight ends, which I mean, they probably have Waller, True. Andrews, Kelsey. Um, so, you know, how, how many people are you really bidding against here? Um, I mean, nine targets, I think it probably helps that, uh, if Antonio Gibson is actually out for any length of time, um, and if he is, I would add Peyton Barber, um, because he got the goal line carry. Um, so I, I think that if, if, um, Gibson's out and they're going to keep throwing as much as they did today, then I think Logan Thomas, probably a top 10 tight end the rest of the way. Um, he's very touchdown dependent, obviously, but I mean, what tight ends aren't touchdown dependent? Um, but if he's going to have seven to 10 targets, um, then yeah, fire him up. So, um, probably in the 10% range, uh, just to make sure you get him. Um, I don't think you have to go that high though. My last tight end is none other than Chicago bear Cole Komet. Seven targets, five catches, 37 yards and a score rostered in one half of 1% of leagues. 
Uh, I think that you are seeing Cole Komet become the featured tight end in Chicago. Uh, it's a shame that they don't score more points or, you know, know how to close out football games. But hey, they'll need to throw in every one that they play. So there's guaranteed volume there for Cole Komet. Um, how much fab would you spend on him? I think you could get him for zero bucks. I didn't get him for zero as well. Um, it should be noted that he played 78% of their offensive snaps this week and totally took over the the tight end one role. Yep. Um, yeah, they might put Jimmy Graham in down by the goal line. Um, but, I mean, he's kind of... Jim, Jimmy Graham at one point was like a top, uh, what, top six tight end? Um, he's still yeah. tight end 11 on the season. Um but his his last three games, he has a total of seven targets, three catches for thirty two yards. Um, so, I mean, Cole commits a zero speculative ad. Uh, if you have to play him, that sucks. But he he's he's like a a desperation play. I oh, love it. All right, and then what I have for you is uh, a question. George Kittle is okay. sitting out there in 28 and a half percent of leagues. Should George Kittle be rostered is my first question. The second question is if he is sitting on the waiver wire, how much fab do you spend on George Kittle given that he could potentially return week 15, week 16? Um, I think you try to sneakily add him for nothing. If he's available, um, I think players are going to add people that they can score points. Um, they're generally must win situations. Um, so I, I think you should be added in every, in any and every league that you are still alive in. Um, and you should try to get him for zero. That's me personally thinking out loud. That, that's what I, I would do. I would spend fab on him only because. There could be somebody else putting a zero bid in. And unless you have that tiebreaker number one waiver priority, you will lose that. So I would spend fab on George Kittle. I would keep it less than $5 because you're really, you're just trying to beat out anybody else that put, might put in a zero or one buck on him. I would only do like four or three or four. Um, he should be rostered in every league. He very well could be back for championship week. Uh, it depends on what happens the next couple weeks, but he's uh, supposed to start practicing next week or at least, you know, running and doing those things, practicing. So I, you gotta, I mean, he's the number two tight end in the league. You have to add him. He should not be on a waiver wire anywhere. So add George Kittle, um, maybe save a buck on your Cam Akers bid for George Kittle. Um, but that's the last piece of advice for sneaky ads, the guy could win you a title in week 16, week 16. Um, yeah, all right. Up. That brings us to our defensive streams for the playoffs. Uh, first up, let's talk about the Browns. So the Browns evidently can beat a team with a winning football record. Absolutely destroyed the Titans. Um, they get the Giants and the Jets in weeks 15 and 16. I think maybe you could get you could try to add the Browns defense now. Um, while they're maybe not added because in week 14 they play Baltimore. So maybe people don't really go out there try to adding trying to add them. So you could that might be a decent streamer just to hold on to for weeks 15 and 16. What do you think about adding the Browns D? Um, they've been really good. Um, I, uh, even picked them up and left, <laughs> left them in last week against Tennessee. Um, I, I feel like if that game would have been closer and they weren't in prevent defense for the basic entire second half that, um, you know, they would have been even better. Um, I don't know if you should even be afraid to play him against Baltimore. Um, you know, the, they're not super scary. But, you know, the or I should say the pronouns, pal, um, the Baltimore Ravens offense isn't um, super scary. So is it 
Is it really something that you're worried about? I don't know. Um, I, I totally agree with you. Those those two weeks against the Giants and and Jets should be fantastic. Um, so I would I would I think it's worth saving or worth utilizing a roster spot to have an extra defense. Chances are you're not like. Yes, I would add Cam Akers if you have to have him. Yes, I would add Kiki QT if you have to have him. I would add George Kittle before I'd add a second defense. Um, but I'm not sure if there's anybody else that I would rather that I would rather be stashing than potentially getting those week 15, 16 matchups. Especially yeah. if you get to the end of the week and you know the your, the starters you're playing and you can map out who you're probably planning playing uh week 15, 16 drop whoever else you have on your bench and go pick up an extra defense. Yep. All right. My last suggestion here is the Washington football team plays against San Francisco uh, in week 14. And I think that really either one of those teams could be viable because I really don't think that uh, there's going to be a whole lot of point scoring. Um, I would be fine starting San Fran against Washington I just don't think that Washington has a very potent offense, especially if you take uh, Antonio Gibson out of it. Um, And then San Fran, they haven't really been able to do anything Mm -hmm. against the Bills, currently only putting up 17 points. Uh, And Nick Mullins just threw another pick at the goal line for Jeff Wilson. So, and boy, Nick Mullins! But, I don't know. If Garoppolo and them aren't back, I would be fine starting either one of those two teams. Yeah, Washington defense and or the Washington football team defense. Um, <laughs> yeah, they've they've been they've been good. Chase Young um, has been outstanding. Uh, they have a defensive coach. Um, they you know that's where they load up on. They play a ball control field position game. Um, so yeah, why not? It, it's a little risky. Um, their their schedule down the stretch is is not greatest i mean do you really want to do you really want to play in week 15 against seattle i mean maybe maybe no i'm talking about I, just a one week ad the, the giants held him in check yeah um it maybe the i feel like the 49ers have that capability of just they find it one week where they have all this misdirection and all these burners all over the field and they're just somehow able to eat up the red, the, the Washington football team. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess they're both viable. It's probably a low scoring game. Um, and sure, I, I, I wouldn't spend any fab on them. Well, there you go. All right. Uh, that does it for me. Do you have any, is there anybody that I miss? Is there anybody that you would like to add Alex? Not off the top of my head. Um, again, I I would just do a search for any, anybody that might be stupid and drops a top 10 defense for some reason. Um, you know, whether I don't think anybody would drop the Colts, but they might. Um, I don't think anybody would be, um, you know, dropping the Steelers defense, but I guess they might. Um, Dolphins are still, they're only available in 10% of leagues, even though we've been talking them up. The Saints are available in 77. Um, For some reason, the Seahawks defense is rostered in 73% of leagues, which is hilarious to me, um, considering they were on pace to give up the most yards in NFL history at some point. What? Um, The Rams defense is really good. Um, they're available in a quarter percent of leagues, 30% of leagues. Um, anybody who's playing the bears is always a good matchup. Um, especially if yardage is included, um, because the bears, uh, generally don't generate that much yardage. Um, or if you want, you can go with the chiefs who are available in over 40% of leagues, um, because they're probably going to blow somebody out and you just have to hope that they get a turnover or two and you'll be fine. So yeah, I don't have a whole lot to add. Um, best of luck to everybody in week 14. Um, it's time to win some money. Money, money, money. All right. Well, that brings us to 
newsy stuff. Money, 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 money. Money, money. <laughs> Alex, the New York Jets have fired defensive coordinator Greg Williams after his Engage 8 blitz call. Um, asked why... With a quarterback spy. With a quarterback spy, yes. That's right. That is... That's... Yes, because Derek Carr has wheels. Um, now... <sighs> asked why... He didn't overturn the call. Head coach Adam Gay said, I wish I would have called a timeout. <laughs> is that so that he could have blitzed all 11 members of the defense? Or f- is that to um, ha- have them go back to the goal line? My favorite thing that I saw was something that Shefty put out. Adam Schefter posted this hilarious stat about just how improbable it was for that play call to even be made to to all out blitz. And it was something like in the history of football, there's been like 250 some odd situations where th- it's been that amount of time, that down a distance to win the game, and it's been a Hail Mary. And in all of those situations, not a single time in history has one defensive coordinator or head coach combo ever, anyone ever, called an all-out blitz. Never, not once. But you know who did? Greg Williams and Adam Gase. They took it upon themselves they got the he- they got the phone call from upstairs and they said, "Excuse me, our perfect record is on the line. We need to lose this game." And so Greg Williams dialed up the blitz and and the the spy because why wouldn't you spy? So, yeah, so I don't know if anybody's even talking about this or not, but have has anybody um investigated the fact that potentially Greg Williams put a bounty on um, car and that was like their last chance to get him out of the game and so <laughs> the defenders just took it upon themselves to all blitz and try to take him out uh, do you think he put a bounty on his own job <laughs> <laughs> well I haven't gotten fired so I don't yet. know how NFL coaching salaries work but if he gets fired, does he get paid for the rest of the year? Would you really want to coach the Jets or just get paid and move on? You'll probably get another job next year. Do you think that I he'll mean, get the, a the job? The dude put bounties on people and he got, he's gotten like four other jobs. Do you think that he'll get a job after this? Do you think either one of them will? Sure. Really? Yeah. I mean, the, the NFL coaching thing is a brotherhood. Yeah, people are still going to remember Adam Gase as... Um, just a, one of the best offensive minds of this generation. Um, and he's just, he's going to be a coach for the next 30 years somehow. It'll be, I, I can't wait to make running jokes about him forever. He's never going to go away. Rex Ryan said it was the dumbest call he's ever seen. He's been around the thing for 58 years, 30 as a head coach, or 30 years as a coach. That's the dumbest call ever. There's a time and a place for cover zero. That sure ain't it. It's just stupid. So that's, uh, yeah, there you go. That must have been in between foot massages for good old Thanks, Rex. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Well, that's all I got. Thanks for hanging out for newsy stuff. Um, in a little smidge of social media news, we did hit. 1,000 Twitter followers. So that's actually pretty freaking exciting. Uh, if you don't follow us on Twitter, we are at the FF Sackos. Uh, we did post a meme drop in honor of hitting 1,000 Twitter followers. There's some spiciness, all originals um, that we're pretty proud of. So go check us out on Twitter. Check the memes. They're also on our Insta, which is at like 200 followers. So, you know, we're just taking over social media land. But How's the, how's the bachelorette going, Jason, before we go? Um, 
Is there, um, do you have an update? I, I have not heard anything about it. Are you enjoying it? I, yeah, I enjoy the bachelorette. So what my wife and I do is we sit down, uh, usually every Tuesday and Thursday because we, you and I record Monday and Wednesday. So I get Tuesday, Thursday with her. Um, so you're my hobby work wife and she's my normal wife. Um, I just as affectionate with both of them, but, uh, we, uh, so we're watching the bachelor. Good for you. I know what we do. <laughs> Uh, watching the bachelorette i don't know taisha is kind of all over the place she's in love with all of them but she really can't stand bennett and noah's feud right now uh they don't get along noah's pretty childish and bennett just talks down to everybody because he went to harvard but he doesn't know how to spell uh limousine um and he doesn't know how to uh, he doesn't understand basic math with jenny has 10 apples but jim ate three and somebody took four away so how many apples are left the, the guy he's the dumbest smart person i've ever seen and he's very annoying but taisha is like oddly attracted to him and he's he's like a i don't even know i don't i don't even know how to describe the guy he, he's unreal noah's just like a immature 23 24 5 year old dude like he's just an he's just a dude just a regular guy. He's just young and thinks he's cool because he came on the show with a mustache. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I like some guys. I like Ben a lot. I think he could win it. I think he'd make a great bachelor if he didn't. Um, Easy got let go. He got sent home. I liked Easy a lot. He seemed like a normal dude other than his name being Easy. I didn't really get that part. But hey, you know, that's his name. Um <laughs> So yeah, the batch that's gonna be interesting. I like Taisha a lot. She's so much better than Claire was. How are, are you watching it? Are you up on this at all? Do you watch do you read? No. No. Okay. I I do um have a challenge for everybody that's listening or watching right now. Um, because apparently this one guy cannot spell limousine. Um I looked up how to spell limousine and I would not have spelled limousine correctly. So what? Um a, a quick challenge. Would no, you have I missed would have the U? Not spelled limousine, correct? Don't I should have asked it. you to spell I mean, limousine. I should have asked you to spell limousine. Damn it! No, you. It, yeah, if if you would have, I I would have gotten it wrong. Uh, oh, I'm pissed now. L i m o u s i n e lim o u zine. Yeah, that's that's a tough. That that's not that easy of a word. Damn. Well. Win some, lose some, I guess. Uh, but we watched that, and then we watched The Amazing Race. That's coming to a close. Um, we watch all sorts of fun stuff. She likes her TV. We're sad Dancing with yeah, the Stars is over, but honestly, I can tell you that I've never been more happy to never have to look at Tyra Banks on my TV. I cannot stand that woman. She wears obnoxious dresses. Her hair changes between every commercial. <laughs> every dress is brighter than the next one and has more fake jewelry on it. And everybody tells her how pretty that she looks, but she looks like a damn disco ball. And her voice is really high pitched and she's so excited. I just can't. Tom Bergeron, I miss you. Sincerely, Jason. Hold on. Do they do they hang Tyra Banks from the ceiling and just bounce lights off of her? Because I would pay to. I would, I that would, would be the show. only way I would enjoy watching her. The only way if they swung her ass around. All right. Wow. You God, were, I got you me were very passionate I, about. I can't that. stand that freaking woman. Um, I cannot also, stand Tyra. I, I've. Have you not watched the Queen's Gambit yet? <gasps> I seen it and I love it. I love the Queen's Gambit. Um, yeah, it was really good. I thought it was yeah. fantastic. Uh, the chess world has said that it's not a very, it's not like very good in terms of the actual chess playing. Oh. But I mean, who Whatever. cares? It's there for the story, right? But if you have not watched the Queen's freaking Gambit, oh my goodness! Um, hey, did you ever finish Game of Thrones? Where's that at? Yeah, we finished that like f right after Maggie was born. Um, so yeah, it was it was fine. You know, last Just season fine. was a little disappointing, but I think he could have done worse. I, I would have preferred that uh, that the White Walkers ended up on the throne. Um, I, I think ultimately that's how I, I would have decided to end it. Uh, I think that I think that would have been the best solution. Um, 
So yeah, no, Game of Thrones is fine. Um, your your boy Debo Samuel's heating up here at the end and and maybe winning you a playoff spot. Um, yeah, so so Game of Thrones was good. Um, I would watch it if you haven't watched it. Um, I would also um, again, why have you not watched Hamilton? You're breaking your you're hurting my feelings because you still haven't watched it. <laughs> also, um, for the for those of you that are still listening, first of all, thanks. Welcome. You're crazy. Um, the uh, did you if you have watched Hamilton and listened to the soundtrack multiple times, like I have, Adam Sandler actually sang the entire Hamilton soundtrack. Um, no. It's on Spotify, so you can. Yeah, so you can actually listen to Is it terrible? Adam Sandler sing the entire soundtrack. Oh, it's really bad. It's really he, it's the man classic, cannot sing. Bad Adam Sandler. He cannot sing. I don't know why he sings. Uh, it's, Other than it's the bad. Hanukkah song, I, I mean, put on your yarmulke. It's time for a Hanukkah. The it's about that of time Seattle of year. Supersonica. Celebrate Hanukkah. Um, OJ so, Simpson. Yeah, that not I, a Jew. Not a Jew. <laughs> but you know who is? Hall the of Famer Rod, Rod Carew. Carew. <laughs> yeah, so um the Yeah, I, I didn't know where this segment was going. I just wanted to hear you get passionate about the Bachelorette, which is just hilarious to me. Um it's just trash television. It is not trash television. It's actually quite entertaining. <laughs> Thank you very much. Chris Harrison wasn't on the episode, though. He took his kid to college, and so it's been JoJo. JoJo's kind of meh, but I miss you, Chris. But, oh, hey, in as one of the last challenges... people are not watching The Masked Singer, or do you think you can oh, sing whatever those terrible Fox shows are that get advertised during every game? Like, as long I as you're not watching your that, voice. like... I can see what? your voice. I mean... I can see Alex like, Krogh's hey, fantasy football analysis. <laughs> I can see Alex's terrible. red beard. Like, oh my god. I can oh. see Alex's chest hair. Oh, speaking of that, our social media guy promised that when we hit 1,000 Twitter followers, you would do a podcast shirtless. What are the odds that you'll do a shirtless podcast? Um, I mean, do I have to shave my nipple hairs first? Oh, did you see that freaking Twitter comment? Because there was a Twitter comment about your nipple hair from, from I think, Kafka. No, I didn't. <laughs> I, I think Kafka <laughs> had some comment on Twitter about your. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Uh, I have to. Uh, I have to find the comment. One of okay. one of your one of your buddy old pals had. Had a nice comment for you, and it was very entertaining. All right. Last bit here, if you stuck around this long. I need J.K. Dobbins to put up a whopping 15 fantasy points tomorrow. Do you think he does Oh, man. 15 fantasy points, half PPR scoring. And I have surpassed someone with the same record that I was down 50 points against going into this weekend. I need 15 out of Dobbins. Man, that's against that's asking that, a lot. I it's think. a touchdown. It, it's a touchdown to me. If he gets a touchdown, he gets it. I think he'll have 90 yards. I really want <sighs> another Debo catch here to make it like 13 though. Um, you know, but, We'll see. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to get that. Um, but good luck to you. I mean, he, he's he's had, what, over 15 once, and it happened to be the last game he played, so it's possible. Oh, Bourne converted for the first down. They got it inside. They're at the 16. Oh, man. Or the 14. This is absolutely doable here. We could get a little Debo action going on, and I could be sitting pretty. But oh, Kendrick Bourne. Shall, shall we sign off and uh, let let people uh, leave them in mystery, and we'll uh, talk to you guys in a couple days. And da, da, you know, da, yeah, you'll see if I got dashed. There you go. Yeah, you'll know if I'm happy or not, and on the podcast. All right, thank you guys for listening. We're gonna. 
transfer to your to our social media page. We are at the FF Sackos. Follow us. Listen to us everywhere. Have a good night. Good luck in the playoffs. Go crush it. All of our rankings on the website. You should check them out. I might actually do them this week because it actually matters. We um, suck at and, promoting uh, our website. What's uh? Yeah, you should log on to our website, the fantasyfootballsackos.com. Um, Fox rankings are there. Um, pretty much anything you need, you can still check out the the playoff. Uh, you know, rankings from a couple of weeks ago as far as who has the easiest schedule. Um, you know, maybe we'll put up some random article or something over the next couple of weeks of um, being goofy. And uh, but yeah, check out our website. All the rankings are there or, you know, feel free to to fire uh, any fantasy questions you have at our Twitter account or whatever. We're happy to happy to help any way possible. So good luck this week. Have a good night. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.